Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So today in this video I'll talk about the concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? So generally the books they cover the mathematical part of this topic that how do you arrive at the eigenvalues and eigenvectors? But in this video I'll tell you what they are. What is the geometrical interpretation of eigenvalues and eigenvectors? So let's take this example. So you can see here that these arrows, this green arrow is representing, suppose this point is representing 3 comma 0, right? So on the x-axis, we are going 3 units and there are no units gone on the y-axis. So this is a vector represented by 3, 0, right? Similarly, here you can see another vector and this vector is represented. So you can see this is uh, in the y direction. So if we tilt this vector and suppose I make the vector like this in this way. So this vector is represented by let's say the coordinate system 1, 2. So this can be represented in a vector as 1, 2 in a column form, right? So we have combined these two vectors and this is how we have written it, right? 3, 0, 1, 2. Now, there are certain matrices. So what happens when a matrix hits a vector, right? So what is the transformation on that? Let's see. And let's take another vector. Like, so I've taken this yellow vector. You can see it is in the negative, in the second coordinate. So the coordinates are minus one, one. So let us see when this matrix hits this vector, what will happen, right? So let us multiply the two vectors minus 1 and 1. So I hope everybody knows how to multiply two matrices. So the first row gets multiplied with the first column. So 3 into minus 1 is minus 3. 1 into 1 is plus 1. Similarly, the second row with the first column, 0 into minus 1 is 0. 2 into 1 is plus 2. So this leads to the vector minus 2 comma 2, right? So can we see any relationship with the vector that we multiplied? You can see that it is 2 times the vector minus 1 comma 1, right? That means what is happening basically, if I extend this vector minus 1 comma 1, if I extend this vector, in both directions, right? What is happening? This vector is getting stretched by two units. That means the vector is getting double of it. Isn't it? Right? So this is the first case when we took this matrix, we multiplied it with minus 1, comma 1, and we saw that the resultant vector is two times the original vector, right? Let us take another example. Let's take the second example as 0.5 minus 1.0 minus 1.0 and 0.5. And let us see its effect on the same matrix. So let us take 0.5 minus 1.0. Then we have minus 1.0. We have 0 0.5 and we are, sorry, we are multiplying it with the vector minus 1 comma 1 and let's see what is its effect right now when we multiply 0. 0.5 with minus 1 is minus 0. 0.5 and then we have the okay let us change this vector to 1 minus 1 let's change this right now when we multiply it with 1 minus 1 what is its effect 0. 0.5 with 1 is 0. 0.5 then minus 1.0 into minus 1 is 1.0 so 1.0 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 and the effect here minus 1.0 into 1 is minus 1.0 and then we have minus 0 0.5. So it is minus 1 point. Um, so here let, let us change again. Sorry. So let us change this also to 1 1. Yeah. Now let us take it. Let's see this. So 0.5 into 1 is 0.5 minus 1. So this will lead to minus 
and similarly minus 0.1 into 1 is minus 0.1 so this is also going to lead to u as minus 0.5 right so what is the change or what is the relationship of this vector with the original vector can you see it is minus 0.5 times 1 comma 1 so while i was constructing this example you could have seen that not all matrices when it hits a vector this result happens right so that means what am I trying to say that whenever a matrix hits a vector, right, a special vector, it's not that it hits every vector and the same thing happens. When it hits a vector, what happens? Either the vector gets stretched, right, like in the previous example, we saw that it became two times or the vector gets squashed. So here we can see that the vector is getting half and in the negative direction of the original vector right so when such a matrix this is called a transformation so when such a matrix it's a special vector which leads to either the stretching of the vector or the squashing of the vector that means the vector the resultant vector obtained lies in the span of the original span means if you draw the line through that vector in both the direction that is called the span so if the new vector is obtained in the span of that vector the span gets blocked right so those vectors those vectors are called eigen vector right those vectors are called the eigen vectors and the value with which it gets stretched or squashed the value right of stretching or getting squashed that value it's it will be always a numerical value as you saw in this problem this value is called the eigen value right so you saw that it's not necessary that every vector is going to have the same phenomena only some special vectors follow this right so those special vectors are called the eigen values and the value with which they get stretched or they get squashed that value is called the eigen value so this is the geometrical interpretation of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So this is what is happening basically. So it's not sometimes what happens when you apply a matrix to a vector, the matrix might get rotated. It will not lie in the span. So you can see this green line is the span of this vector. Blue, the blue vector, if I represent the blue vector over here. So you can see there are many blue vectors. But for this blue vector, the one which I have just drawn, for this blue vector, the green one, the green line is the span, right? So if any vector, when a matrix hits this vector and we get uh, in the span of that span gets locked, that special vector is called the eigenvector and the value with which it gets stretched or maybe squashed, that value is called the eigenvalue, right? So basically, if I represent this in the form of a mathematical way, I'm taking a matrix, so let that matrix be X. Then I'm taking a vector, so let that vector be X, right? Now, when we multiply it, what are we getting? We are getting back some multiple, any multiple, times the original vector, the vector is X. So this is my matrix of transformation. So this is the matrix that I multiplied, right? X is my vector, X is my vector, Lambda is the value that I'm getting, right? You saw in the previous example, it was two. In the last example, it was minus, five, minus 0 0.5. So this is also the same vector, right? So here, lambda is the eigenvalue and x is called the eigenvector. And this becomes the mathematical expression of solving eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? So let us see this in the next slide. So how do we represent it? We say that let A be a given matrix and let there be a scalar lambda and a non-zero vector x such that Ax is equal to lambda. So our aim will be to calculate this x and this lambda, right? So they have different names apart from eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Lambda is called the eigenvalue. They are also called the latent roots or the characteristic roots for the matrix A. And similarly, X is also called the eigenvector or the characteristic vector, right? And this vector is always going to be a column matrix, right? 
So this was the geometrical interpretation of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which is often missing in the books. They only give you the method of solving it. So you should know that what it signifies. So I hope by watching this video, you have understood what is the meaning of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So in the next video, I'll talk about the properties of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and then we will come to the computation part. So if you like the video, do hit the like button. And those who have not subscribed my channel, do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video. And do share the videos with the ones who want them. Thank you so much for watching. And believe in yourself and you will definitely succeed.